Um, last time I spoke, I brought up a few things that some people probably didn't know, and neither did, did I until, um, until I started learning Hebrew. And um, the interesting thing is uh, that God spoke the world into existence. If you have a look at the beginning of John, the Gospel of John, you'll see the Word was made flesh. And then that coincides right back to Genesis, where it talks about um, how he, God, Bereshit, Bara, Elohim, he created, God created in the beginning. And then there was this word called Et, which doesn't actually have a translation, but it points to the next thing, and the next thing was the heavens and the earth. But Et is actually made up of Aleph, which is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, and Tav which is the final letter of the Hebrew alphabet. So it's interesting that he created it, and that in the end, in the book of Revelations, it says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. So even before God actually created the earth, he had a language. It says angels speak in the language as well. We had a language right at the beginning that was given us, and we had that right through the flood. It was only one language, and then after the flood, the languages were changed. The scripture says that, um, uh, talks about the fruit of the lips, the tongue. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. He that loves it will eat its fruit. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. He that loves it will eat its fruit. Now, it's not loving death or life. It's actually loving the power of the tongue. And that's one thing that God gave man to his, to his uh, um, benefit, or not so to his benefit, is this little waggly thing in our mouth called the tongue. That can get us into a whole lot of trouble. And it can actually frame your life based on the things you believe. Because it says it's not what you goes down and you eat, it's what comes out. Because what comes out comes out of the heart. If you say you're not going to amount to much, you won't amount to much. Not in your life until you change that. You don't have to get to a specific level and stay there and say, well, that's it, I've done it, I've done it, that's my goal. You stretch, stretch, stretch. And it's the people that actually stretch and go the extra mile, the ones that really feel achievement in their lives. Or you can shrink, 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 and then you just become um, a seed in a, in a hard nut. And um, you never amount to much. But anyway, what I want to talk about is that whole scenario that death and life are in the power of the tongue. So right in the beginning, the first letter of the alphabet was Aleph, which actually represents in the Hebrew, original Hebrew, Paleo-Hebrew, it looked like a skull, and it was the skull of an ox. That was Aleph, or the A letter in our alphabet. The skull of the ox represents strength, or leader, or power, or... or, or yeah, power or leader. And the next letter, bait, actually looks a little bit like the plan of a house. It actually means family or house. <coughs> so when you put the first two together, the Aleph and the bait, you actually get Ab, which means father. Right in the beginning of time, before he created the earth, the alphabet was there, the meaning was in there, in God's words. Nothing falls by the wayside. Everything had a point and a meaning. And you can see that right through the alphabet of the Hebrew. There's 22 letters in the alphabet, represent 22 chromosomes in our genetic pattern. So right in the essence of all of this, it's bigger than us. It's planned, it's pre-planned, it was there before the beginning of time. And God had in his alphabet the nail, which is called the bar, it's the letter bar, the nail, which is the hook, which represents Jesus Christ. He was there. The covenant was there, that's a covenant between man and God, which is a sacrificed lamb, and the covenant, covenant of blood was there in the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet, which is Tav, or our Z, and it actually means covenant. Talking to a brother before this, there's a word and letter in there called Het, 
Chet, which is like Rachel. <laughs> Chet actually means fence. And if you look at the, um, the holy tabernacle in the, um, in the wilderness that was there in Moses' time when they wandered, it had a big fence around it and it was held up by hundreds of valves or hooks. And there was only one entrance way into it. And so a fence, it actually represents, if you uns unscroll a, 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 a Torah, which is the, um, the words of uh, the Hebrew Bible, it's all wrapped up and it's one length. All the pages in one length. If you unroll it, it's a fence. It's a fence that goes round and then there's an entranceway. And that entranceway is Jesus Christ. Was there right in the beginning, before time, and it's even in our lives today. And there's a lot more to, to that. But that's what I mentioned there last week, or last time I spoke. Now, in the Gospel of Mark, if we just, if you've got your Bibles there, end of Mark, Mark 16. It's a scripture that I hung on when I first got saved. When I first got saved, that was the thing that fascinated me. What fascinated me was that God had power in his presence. I'd been to church, I'd never, I'd been to church school, I never, never felt, was an Anglican church, never felt the power of God. Uh, never, always questioned, is he there or is he not? You know, what do I have to do? Is he there or is he not? But when I first got saved, as I mentioned, I was in the gangs, and I went to a meeting there one night, and they started praying, and I bowed my head, and then they started praying in these languages. Language is amazing. I'm learning Hebrew at the moment. Amazing to learn. Yeah, they go from right to left. And you've got your books upside down, so you start at the back. And apparently, every nation that lives on the right-hand side of Israel go from right to left in their language. Nation on the left-hand side of Israel go from left to right. Isn't that interesting? Is that by chance and coincidence? No, it's not. Mark 16, it says, Jesus said before he appeared to the uh, eleven, they sat at the table, he rebuked them, rebuked their unbelief and their hardness of heart, because they did not believe those, those uh, who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, go into the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes, he who believes, he who believes and is baptized, will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And the King James says, damned. These signs will follow believers. These signs will follow believers. The key is belief. The key is belief. The scripture says, you know, he that believes, confesses with his mouth, you know, the Lord will save him. He's a believer, he's saved. But signs follow believers as well. And they are so important that Jesus said to them, tarry. He said, tarry in Jerusalem until you receive on high my Holy Spirit with power. So, it says, these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God, and they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Now some Bibles leave that scripture out. They say it wasn't in the original uh, uh, translation, or scrolls or whatever. The interesting thing, I had an argument with somebody on Facebook there, it wasn't so much of an argument, he says, ah, no, it was left, it wasn't in the original, blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, hey, it's interesting, the book of Acts confirms everything that it says in that scripture. So that's exactly what happened. And I think he said, well, you know, it's questionable, some of the stuff in the book of Acts as well, you know. And I said, the interesting thing is that people who argue against the whole issue, tongues, for example, don't speak in tongues. You'll never find a tongue speaker arguing about the fact that you receive with tongues. Never. Never seen, never, never met one. 